Hi, everyone. I'm Steve here again with Dr. Nario for our weekly interview. How are you doing, doctor? Pretty good, Steve. How are you? Are you enjoying the hot weather? <laughs> yeah, it's cooled off a little today. We're I know. It's better. In the middle of June as we're doing this recording. <laughs> so uh, Dr. Nario is at Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. My wife was just in here asking a bunch of questions to the doctor saying, hey, I got to get up to the clinic. So she's making her appointment, uh, but we're kind of close. So anyway, uh, you can check them out online, Biointegrative Health Center. And um, so um, if you have questions, put them in the comment section. And we're going to talk about, you know, there's so many medications that were designed and work for some something that they're treating, right? This happens all the time, it seems to me. So you got this medication, and they find out after people are using this medication, they say, hey, this is improving this. You know, it, we prescribed it for this, but we're noticing all these people on this are getting benefits over here. So we're going to talk about one of those medications. What is it? Yeah, well, Steve, as you describe it, it's, this is what we term in the medical field as repurposed drugs. A good example for you, you have a T-shirt, right? And your T-shirt, you, you wear it every day. And after all these years, it gets old. Now it becomes a rag. Now you can actually, oh, it's not only a T-shirt I can wear. I can clean my stuff with it. So you have another extra use for a product that was initially made for only one use. So this is what we call rep uh, repurposed drugs, and meaning existing medications that are used to treat new conditions uh, different from the ones they were originally developed for. And this is actually, they use this because of the safety profile of the drug and um, manufacturing processes and clinical data that was uh, done on this and actually was seen to be more efficient and more cost effective. And usually these are existing drugs. These are FDA approved drugs already. The, and that's why you're not gonna have a hard time uh, FDA running after you when you use this. And you're just basically uh, finding new applications uh, for, for this specific drug to treat disease and conditions that were initially not there, but now you actually have discovered something uh, beneficial for the patient and also why it's pretty safe because it's again it's tested it was approved by fda and it was it has gone through safety human studies that's why this is something in the in, in the medical field now that is brewing um and and one of this would be yes the drug that we're going to be discussing today okay so what is the drug and tell me what is the drug and what was it originally purposed for well, Steve, the, the drug that actually, so again, I came from the conference of, 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 about peptides. So the one that they're raving about, the name is Amlexanox, A-M-L-E-X-A-N-O-X. And it's a small molecular drug and it's traditionally been approved to treat aptus ulcers or canker, those painful canker sores that you get, the white ones in the mouth. And originated in Japan and it was, again, named originally as aftosol. And this is actually something that's not only used for canker sores, but asthma and allergies. Uh, first patented in the U.S. in 1994, but discontinued in the U.S. on 2014 due to low sales. And uh, I guess they found better options to treat the canker sores. It's not because of its safety. And now we use for canker sores like a benzocaine, like a topical anesthetic, and even hydrogen peroxide as we gargle it. Uh, but it's still being utilized, uh, especially in Europe, for the same use to treat um, oral ulcers. And this also has a good use why it was used for allergies. It can lower down histamine. So uh, this is the kind of like a little background history of, of the drug. So now what have they found? What has it been repurposed for? Well, now, as, uh, as they actually have found, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory. It's being used in relation to any type of inflammation, osteoarthritis, aches and pains, uh, even um, what we call uh, uh, autoimmune inflammation. That's also being something that's part of like the, now they're doing research now on it also in that aspect. And it also controls a metabolic function. So when you talk about metabolic function, this falls now into obesity, 
metabolic syndrome. And a Melexanox not only is going to improve your, your weight, but also your insulin sensitivity. It lowers weight and reduces obesity. How does it do that? It's because it destroys or it promotes the destruction of fat cells. And now they also found that it stimulates the mitochondria uh, to actually be more active, to burn up fat faster uh, and better. And a, a good test for this would be seeing obese mice. And they've, uh, here's, here's the good thing. So one of the, the waves in that conference was even you're eating unhealthy, this medicine can actually still produce weight loss for you. I mean, it's not we're promoting bad eating, right? But that the study showed that even though you're in the living the unhealthiest life, you will still have weight loss because of thermogenesis. It's going to make you feel warm. It's like you're exercising, but you're not. And it's increasing your energy expenditure. And one of the things also that I like about it was type 2 diabetes. It also lowers and controls blood sugars real well. And of course, my field where I uh, kind of, um, I guess, specialize in cancer. So this is also something that uh, cancer patients would benefit from because it lowers down all these enzymes that actually stimulates and, and makes cancer grow and spread. And all, as I mentioned, autoimmune diseases also are affected by that. And even um, uh, congestive heart failure. I know that's part of, for example, for you, Steve, that you have encountered that in your family. So this one is being used to reduce heart failure and even osteoporosis. So that's one of the bigger problems of our menopausal females who's running out of hormones. So as you can see, so many use with just one pill. Yeah, that is amazing. And it makes sense when you said something that got my attention that it makes you feel warm or that means you're burning calories like when you exercise. Right. So, I mean, we're not promoting not exercising, but it's affecting your metabolism, which what you just said, I, I'm not the doctor here, but I'm connecting the dots, that if it does that, it's making you burn calories, which would help with your lo weight loss or making your metabolism work. So, that's an amazing connection. And they find something that's for sores in your mouth. And all of a sudden it does this. And if it affects inflammation and reducing inflammation, there's a whole nother long list of things that it can benefit, right? Just by connecting the dots of what happens when inflammation is lowered in the body, right? Right. Well, you have to remember though, this is, so the, the form that you treat um, canker sores with is a topical um amlexinox so you rub it and then there it goes this one when you want the systemic effects this is now a pill or a capsule that you have hmm. to take okay so if someone's interested in this for one you guys can leave comments in the comment section and we have a watch list that dr nario we've got a watch list where you can see the interviews that i've done with him but what would you suggest if um someone says to their doctor or how would they ask about this with their doctor? Uh, usually it's not going to be just to, because when I mentioned to you a while ago, they discontinued this in the U.S. because of low sales, right? And also not being famous as a, a go-to for treatment for, for canker sores. That's why your conventional doc probably will scratch his head like, what are you talking about? So <laughs> that's probably what you're going to get. So this is something that I use on patients, but I use a compounding pharmacy for. And it's usually with the compounding pharmacies that are the ones who has the capability to get the materials and uh, make it into a pill. Gotcha. So that kind of answers my questions. If they're interested in that, they need to talk to maybe an integrative yes. clinic or an integrative physician like you are to find out how do I get this, right? Right. Well, a good example, Steve, that for my patients, I use it. A good one of my patients who benefited from this, I use. She has congestive heart failure. She has um, allergies at the same time. She has chronic inflammation from her osteoarthritis. She's around eighty-five. Um, as you can see, three problems. Right. I only have one pill for her, and that actually made those those things. I didn't say want to say go away, but it became better. So, of course, I'm not saying don't stop your heart medications. Um, of course, don't uh, don't exercise anymore because of the osteoarthritic pain. 
Of course, all of these are combined, but that one pill kind of became a game changer for her. Sure. And it's like, it's not a scientific study or anything, but you have patients and you try different things. A lot of times you're trying to diagnose things. I know in the clinic, a lot of people come to your clinic because they don't know what the problem is and they need something um, that's more integrative to figure out what is wrong. And that's what you do. So you may try some things that a conventional physician isn't going to try, right? That's right. That's kind of like we're out of the box doctors, as we call it. So not going out of the box extremely, but we just have different things to offer to our patients. The menu is not the same for for this restaurant. Maybe that's a better way yeah. to phrase so it. So you're, you're not doing anything crazy. Huh? <laughs> yeah. it's All right. Medicine. So if you guys have if you guys have questions, put them in the comment section. I'll make sure that the doctor sees them and you're looking for a, maybe a functional physician or a integrative um, physician who is looking at other um, we'll call other opportunities or other ways of treating things on how the body works naturally. So any last thoughts, doctor? Yes. Yeah, so um, the safety profiles, uh, that's basically one of the bigger questions I always get about it. Like, how safe is it? Like, you know, that's why they took it out of the market, right? It's something dangerous. Nope, not really. So safety, very safe, even at high doses. And again, it was actually vouched for by the Journal of Bioanalysis that it was even predicting it will successfully debut as an all-purpose agent for the prevention and management of multitude, multitude of human diseases. And they're seeing it to be one of the future drugs that will be now coming from coming back to life. You already buried, buried, made it, buried it and dead, considered it dead, but now it's going to come out again from the woodworks, and it's going to change again the 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 milieu of healthcare. And one of the more common side effects, I don't want to say it's super hundred percent safe, zero uh, side effects, occasional nausea and diarrhea, but again with the patients that I use it on, really zero to. <sighs> Yeah, there's always something, no matter what the medication is, something here or there can go wrong. It's always a possibility. Right. But you mentioned something before we started the recording. You said that this is not really expensive either, right? Mm -hmm. Nope, it's not. That's why all of these uh, good effects in a, in a pill, in a capsule, I'd take. Oh, here's another good example for you. A patient who is using steroids, I actually help them. They cannot lower their steroid medicine down. Once I combine this with the steroid, they actually lower down the dose. And you know, chronic steroids, loss of side effects, high blood pressure, um, uh, your, your joints and bones will uh, wither away. Um, you're going to be more obese and bigger and fatter. So you want to have less steroids in that system. And Amlexanox kind of helped taper that dose down. Okay, so was this person taking the steroids for inflammation? Yeah, so... so it's not an anabolic steroid. It, it's a no, steroid. No, no, no. <laughs> it's right, a, so yes. I, I, I mean, again, I'm not the doctor, but I heard that eventually will just eat away at your joints. And yeah. so that's interesting. So you've got this medication that works. It sounds like it works similarly. And so you used it in conjunction or replaced it, or how did you do that? In conjunction. So it's, again, as I said, there's always a good mix of Western and Eastern medicine here that you need to recognize the importance of prescription medicines and, and their, their value in maintaining somebody's health. But understanding that if they stay on that higher dose, the worst would be immunosuppression. You're going to be getting all of these infections, repeated infections, if you keep that patient in a high dose of steroids. So Amlexanox even improves your immune system at the same time while on steroids. So you would see there's, it's like a jack of all trades, right? Wow, that's that's amazing. And like I said, there's probably going to be questions on this, so I want to see what they are. Put them in the comment section. Anything else you can think of on this talk topic, doctor? Well, here's the thing: if you think some drugs are dead, they're not. Now the integrative docs are out there trying to revive so many drugs for better use. Just to give you a teaser, I know you have a lot of athletes here on the on the on the viewing screen. Um, Sildenafil. I know it's used for something else. It's for ED, but 
uh, athletes are getting benefits from this now because it boosts their performance through increasing nitric oxide production. So again, that's a whole nother topic, but just to give you a teaser, uh, we're, we're in the integrative world of finding newer uses for these old drugs to optimize health and longevity. Yeah, that's uh, maybe that could be our next topic. Who knows? So I, I know that at the clinic, you do see a lot of athletes. Uh, UNR is right there mm -hmm. and big athletic program. I, I know you see a lot of athletes from the university who are looking to legally enhance their performance, legally. I guess you could say. <laughs> yes. That's a good term, legally. All right, Dr. Will, we, as always, we thank you for your input and we will see you next time. Well, Steve, thank you again for having me. Always a pleasure. As we all know that our knowledge is your power to better health. And thank you for letting me provide you with edge and longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge.